Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree Number no. 55 of 2021, restructuring the Board of Trustees of Bahrain Polytechnic under the chairmanship of Wal bin Nasser Al Mubarak and the membership of the following: Ali Ahmed Salman Al Bakali, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Tal Abd Rahman Fakhro, Yusuf Farouk Al Muayyad, Ahmed Sami Tajer, Mohammed Salman Al Aradi, and Ibrahim Ali Burshid. The membership term of the chairman and first four members is four years, and the remaining members for three years. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree Number no. 56 of 2021, appointing the following as Directors General at the Civil Services Bureau with the rank of Assistant Under Secretaries Sheikh Maad bin Ija Al Khalifa as Director General of Organization and Position Budget, and Khalil Abdurrasul Hassan as Director General of Policies and Remuneration. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree Number no. 57 of 2021, appointing the following as Assistant Under Secretaries at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy Adnan Abdul Wahab Ishaq as as Assistant Undersecretary for Financial Policies and Budgeting and Barak Nabil Matar as Assistant Undersecretary for Financial Operations. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict Number no. 22 of 2021 to appoint representatives of Bahrain at the Board of Directors of the King Fahad Causeway Authority as follows: the Customs President at the Ministry of Interior Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa as Deputy Chairman, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications for Land and Postal Transfer Sami Abdullah Bouhazza as Member, First Deputy Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry Khalid Mohammed Najib as member and CEO of Ella Bank Mohammed Rashid Al Maharaj as member. Their memberships will be three years on a renewable term. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict Number no. 23 of 2021 to appoint directors at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. The first article of the decision appoints the following as directors: Dina Ali Al Ghawas as the Training and Administrative Development, Lamis Ibrahim Al Hassar at the National Debt Directorate, Hassan Saleh Satar at the Financial Operations Directorate, Ali Jassim Ali at the Expenditure and Collections Directorate, Abdullah Ahmed Taif at the Development of Finance. Financial Systems Directorate, Raghdan Saleh Abdul Rasul at the Revenues Policy Administration Directorate, Layla Hassan Ali at the Human and Financial Resources Directorate, Sheikh Faraz bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa at the International Affairs Directorate, Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa at the Government Investment Directorate, Fatma Mohammed Al Ghahtani at the Budget Administration Directorate, Ibrahim Ahmed Kamal at the Project Management Directorate. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister also issued Edict Number no. 24 of 2021, appointing two directors in government hospitals: Dr. Noor Dhiya Ali Dhaif, Director of Operations and Services; Abdullah Nasser Sultan Suwaidi, Director of Human Resources. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also issued Edict Number no. 25 of 2021, appointing two directors at primary healthcare centers: Mohammed Khalil Ibrahim Ahmed, Director of Operations and Services; Yusuf Abdul Aziz Abdul Ghaffar Al Alawi, Director of Human Resources. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also issued Edict No. 26 of 2021, appointing directors at Bahrain Institute of Public Administration. Article 1 stipulated the appointment of Yusuf Abdullah Ahmed Bouchiri, Director of Human Resources and Finance, Najm Yusuf Isa Salmin, Director of Education and Development, Ghada Mohammed Hussain Shana, Director of Evaluation, Mohammed Hassan Al Sabah, Director of Consultations and Research, Aida Ali bin Rajab, Director of Business development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding the Labor Day holiday for the year 2021. Under the circular, the Kingdom's ministries, state departments, and public institutions will be closed on Saturday, May the 1st of 2021. And since this day falls on a weekend on a weekly holiday, it will be compensated by Sunday, May 2nd of 2021. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely on the occasion of World Day of Safety and Health at Work. The cabinet stressed the importance of occupational health and safety across workplace, noting the national efforts aimed at protecting employees across various sectors against COVID-19. The cabinet noted the ongoing strong collaboration between the executive and legislative authorities, which is centered around forward-looking ambitions and goals, reiterating the government's commitment to facilitating 
expecting further cooperation in this regard. It expressed its sincere condolences to the government and citizens of Iraq following the accidental fire that broke out at Ibn al Khatiba Hospital in Baghdad, which took the lives of 82 people. The cabinet wished the injured a speedy recovery. The session further expressed its sincere condolences to Indonesia following the death of the crew members of an Indonesian Navy submarine that sank off the coast of Bali. The cabinet expressed the kingdom's support to India's fight against COVID-19, extending sincere condolences to the government and citizens of India following the deaths of COVID-19 patients. In this regard, the cabinet decided on sending medical equipment and oxygen to India to support its fight against COVID-19. The Cabinet approved the following memorandums. A memorandum from the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training on a number of school and post-school education development initiatives which are based on developing flexible paths for post-school learning, organizing e-learning, recognizing its qualifications in accordance with procedures and regulations, settling professional standards for practicing 35 practical professions and developing the educational system and infrastructure for schools. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and tourism regarding the amendment of the executive regulations of the commercial companies law to facilitate procedures aimed at ensuring the kingdom remains in line with international developments in the commercial sector. The proposed mechanism for publishing terrorist lists and the sanctions list issued by the Security Council at the official Gazette, the move aims to ensure the kingdom's commitment to coordinate and conform with the enforcement of procedures for dealing with these lists. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to 10 proposals and two law proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the following topic. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning regarding the decisions and requests of municipal councils during the year 2020, in which the Cabinet directed to support the capabilities of municipal councils and direct their requests and recommendations towards their effective course to achieve sustainable development. The Council of Representatives held its weekly meeting chaired by its Speaker Fauzi Azainal. The Council discussed a report of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Authority concerning a draft law to issue the bar law. They decided to return the report to the authority for further study for a period of three weeks. The Council then discussed, approved and referred the following proposals to the government. The dispatch of community service pol police at mosques during Friday and Taraweeh prayers in coordination with the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments and the Ministry of Interior, and a request to the executive authority to suspend all flights from India, including transit passengers, as part of the efforts to combat the coronavirus, exempting only returning citizens. The Council of Representatives Speaker Fauzi Azainal praised the active cooperation with the government for the benefit of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its people. She highlighted the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to strengthen the cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities. She praised the dedicated efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in supporting cooperation with the Council of Representatives. She valued praise of His Royal Highness of the ongoing strong collaboration between the executive and legislative authorities. The speaker praised Bahrain's landmark strides led by His Majesty the King and praised the far-sighted royal directives and vision supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that constructive cooperation with the government reflects commitment to implement the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He reiterated the unwavering support to the reform project led by His Majesty the King, stressing the continued coordination between the legislative and executive authorities. He paid tribute to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailing these directives to harness all efforts to enact the constitutional principles and achieve national goals. He valued all. Also, the national goals.
He valued the praise of His Royal Highness on the ongoing strong collaboration between the executive and legislative authorities. As Saleh highlighted the legislative work stride supported by His Majesty the King and the government's keenness on expanding cooperation. He stressed the importance of legislative executive meetings in bolstering Bahrain's democratic process, describing the cooperation as the cornerstone to further achievements in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. The Minister of Labour and Social Development and Chairman of the Occupational Safety and Health Council, Jamil Ahmedan, affirmed the advancement of the Kingdom's legislation and laws in protecting workers from accidents, injuries and occupational diseases, which is one of the requirements of economic growth. He noted the government's increasing interest in raising the level of occupational safety and health in all production sites. On the occasion of the World Day for Safety and Health at Work, which takes place annually on the 28th of April, Maidan affirmed that the number of occupational incidents in 2020 decreased by 13 percent compared to the previous year which reflects the national efforts in promoting awareness concerning safety and health requirements at work sites he noted that the ministry within the framework of its supervisory role has inspected work sites that included 198,000 workers in the private sector to ensure compliance with all requirements the minister indicated that since the beginning of 2020 Bahrain like other countries has witnessed a major challenge represented in the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic noting that the government has taken measures to confront the pandemic in the workplace. He pointed to the contribution of the ministry's inspections teams to follow up On the employees' commitment to abide by the requirements of occupational safety and health in workers' housing and work sites, to addition to enhancing the facility's application of precautionary guidance. These efforts were praised by private international bodies from labor exporting countries. The Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments and the Information and e-Government IGA announced the launch of the Unified Payment Services for Judicial Services, available within the electronic package for court and case services via Bahrain.ph. The service allows stakeholders from lawyers and parties involved in lawsuits the ability to pay these sums of money due to their transactions with the Ministry of Justice easily by displaying all required dues while providing the ability to pay them all in one transaction. The the Unified Payment Service is a remarkable addition to the electronic transformation process within the justice sector in the Kingdom and an important step that will save the time and effort of beneficiaries and reduce cash transactions by providing an official global platform through which the procedures for paying the required amounts for fees and deposits are completely electronically. The Directorate of the Correction and Rehabilitation works to perform its duties mainly represented in law enforcement and at the same time apply human rights principles in a modern and effective manner. More in this report. The Directorate of Correction and Rehabilitation works to perform its duties mainly represented in law enforcement and at the same time apply human rights principles in a modern and effective manner through many initiatives that integrate together within the framework of applying a reform and rehabilitation approach that guarantees the inmate's reintegration into society after the end of his sentence. This reform approach is launched through providing the services stipulated in the Correction and Rehabilitation Institution Law and its statute, for most of which the comprehensive health care and providing inmate communication means with their families, and at the same time following and applying precautionary measures while prioritizing the health and safety of inmates. Reform and Rehabilitation Center is keen to provide comprehensive care and services to inmates in accordance with the reform and rehabilitation institution and executive regulations. These services include communication services between inmates and their families and friends as an inmate is allowed 30 minutes of phone calls over the span of several days. 
In addition, there is special care to cases with exceptional needs. Video calls were also introduced and are free for all inmates. Since the introduction of video calls, more than 25,000 video calls took place. Health care and the reform and rehabilitation centers include comprehensive services by providing a full, specialized medical team that is available 24 hours for all health care needs for inmates. Also, medications and medical equipment are available and are under supervision upon providing them to the inmates. In addition, there are special meals that are provided to inmates with chronic health conditions. When an inmate's health requires to receive intensive health supervision, they would be transferred to external hospitals in coordination with government hospitals to provide the needed health care according to the case and the required specialization. Health care and reform and rehabilitation centers witness continued success during COVID-19 pandemic by spreading awareness about stopping the spread of the virus. This is in addition to the success of the vaccination campaign for inmates at the reform and rehabilitation centers and none of the inmates are COVID-19 positive. I would like to thank the rehabilitation department for providing great services, including the clinic. The clinic takes care of people with chronic diseases every day for treatment and takes them to the rooms. In some serious cases are taken to the clinic and the clinic is open 24 hours. We also have another service, which is communication, virtual communication and daily communication. We have 10 minutes daily to hold phone calls. And thank God we are communicating with our family and people from outside freely. The department here at the building provides variety of food that meets our needs. For example, if I have low blood sugar or high pressure or another inmate faces another type of illness, you will see that we both receive different kinds of food and the rest receive the same kind of food. So I don't really see any problem with our food and everything is going well. From the beginning, the rehabilitation department as part of the country's efforts was keen on ensuring our safety by following protocol and social distancing. Even at this building, there is social distancing between each one of us. We have many calls a week, sometimes four or five calls according to the available time. The virtual calls are available at exceptional cases. We submit a request and the department is always helpful in providing both virtual and the regular calls. With these field procedures, the Kingdom of Bahrain has been able to make tangible achievements in the field of human rights by applying the alternative punishment law and studying the application of the Open Prisons Initiative, which are initiatives that make reform and rehabilitation more effective in protecting the inmates and preparing them for a new future in their community. To speak more about this topic, we are joined by the chairperson of the National Institute for Human Rights, Maria Khouri. Hello, Ms. Maria. The NIHR delegation visited the Reformation and Rehabilitation Center in Jo and inspected the situation and denied rumors about the treatment of inmates. Could you kindly highlight the truth based on the views of the delegation? Thank you for uh, providing an opportunity for NIHR uh, to comment uh, on this. NIHR has a wide mandate by law. The role is to protect and promote human rights. And that in, includes in our wide mandate conducting announced and unannounced visits to any place on the island that we suspect that there is a violation of human rights. In that context, we had uh, concluded a visit uh, to uh, Joe Prison to specifically monitor the human rights situation. Uh, after the proceedings that took place on uh, April 17th, we also uh, had in mind to overlook the health situation, the medical status of inmates, inspect the buildings that were cleared uh, during the procedures. We also met independently, not only with staff, uh, in charge of the buildings and of prison, but we also randomly uh, chose uh, some inmates and we talked with them. So anything that we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about uh, here stems from facts that were collected from an on-site visit uh, to Joe Prison and specifically to the buildings that were uh, involved in the uh, in the process during this uh, visit. 
uh, as I have said earlier, we met independently with inmates and we met independently with staff. But in addition to that, we also met with the medical staff or doctor in charge uh, of, uh, of Joe Prison who assured us of the medical um, safety and the care that all inmates were uh, receiving. Uh, so we were satisfied with that, uh, uh, with that report. And at the time of the visit or of the inspection, we concluded that the human rights situation and health status of those involved in the clearance process was satisfactory uh, and safe. Uh, any allegations of enforced disappearance that have been you know, uh, going around were unfounded as we uh, note on record that all inmates are uh, accounted for uh, in, in, in the buildings. And can you tell us what the role of NIHR is in interacting with international human rights organizations to highlight the implementation of human rights and law enforcement at the same time? This is a very important question. Although NIHR is an independent institution by law, but we cannot work in isolation from any other uh, national preventive mechanisms or any international or local NGOs. Uh, we have to confirm with all professionalism and transparency that uh, NIHR welcomes every opportunity to cooperate with uh, international and uh, local uh, NGOs. We have an important role, an effective role, uh, and an operational actual role on, uh, on the ground uh, when it comes to receiving complaints and monitoring um, any violations of human rights. From that stems our cooperation with other international uh, NGOs. Uh, we have an independent uh, relationship uh, with them. I confirm that and I reaffirm that, not only with stakeholders, but also with the legislative uh, bodies and executive bodies uh, in the Kingdom uh, of Bahrain. So. This communication that we have and the independent relationship that we have with them makes our uh, mandate more fulfilled when we communicate with other um, international um, uh, organizations or NGOs. And that was the chairperson of the National Institute for Human Rights, Maria Khouri. Thank you very much for joining us. For further discussion on this matter, we have with us on the phone the right run political analyst, Dr. Mohammed Mbarak Jama'a. Hello, Dr. Mohammed. There is a systematic campaign against the Kingdom of Bahrain's human rights in general and their formation and rehabilitation centers in particular. What is the reason for the systematic approach despite the accomplishments and constructive initiatives? Thank you for having me. Actually, we already know that the Kingdom of Bahrain has always been subject to media campaigns by the Qatari regime through its media portal Al Jazeera, which is run by the Qatari intelligence, by the way. Uh, but to be precise, and if we put aside the fact that they have a destructive agenda against the nations of the Middle East and very clear ties to terrorist organizations like ISIS and Al Qaeda, I have to tell you that at this time, the Qatari regime is targeting Bahrain through Al Jazeera because they want to divert the international angry attention about the deteriorating human rights record in Qatar, particularly about the death of thousands of workers that are being inhumanely used for the construction of 2022 World Cup. This actually um, has resulted in a tragedy that sparked global condemnation against the Qatar regime. They are in trouble. That's why they want to target Bahrain by making up a false narrative about the reform and rehabilitation centers, but actually it's a narrative that doesn't exist. The Qatar Al Jazeera channel is known for its incitement and truth-hiding approach. It works within suspicious agendas. So how could such misleading methods and defaming campaigns be exposed? Let me first tell you that Al Jazeera has lost most of its credibility. They used to enjoy some good reputation among some people, of course, before 2011. But then the role of Al Jazeera as a tool for destruction and death among millions and millions of people in this region has been exposed to the whole world. Uh, I think it's necessary to spread awareness among people about the difference between real media and fake media that covers itself under slogans of democracy and reform, while hides behind its back a poison knife of terrorism and destruction. 
That's the truth about Al Jazeera Channel. What are the responsibilities of uh, civic organizations and human rights mechanisms in Bahrain to highlight the truth? Well, Bahraini accomplishments uh, in different areas speak on its behalf, uh, but the role of media, whether typical or social media, is significant in combating propaganda, rumors, and stereotypes, in my opinion. Uh, I think we simply need more media and more internal and external activities that expose the truth and talk about the, the Kingdom of Bahrain and its great record in human rights and peaceful coexistence, because this is actually the truth about Bahrain. And this is the history of this country that enjoys a record of freedom of expression, freely elected parliament, women empowerment at all levels, and, and, and. While you don't find even 1% of that in Qatar, which is desperately trying to defame Bahrain's record. And that was a right round political analyst, Dr. Mohammed Mbarak Jumaa. Thank you very much for joining us. And from the Ministry of Interior Officer in Reformation and Rehabilitation Center, First Lieutenant Abdurrahman Naif joins us on the phone. Hello, First Lieutenant. What Qatari Al Jazeera Channel and Reuters aired account about inmate situations were false and against the law. Could you inform us how the management of the center had dealt with the violations of inmates? Thanks for uh, hosting me. First of all, uh, all inmates should be protected by the Reformation Habilitation Center. Uh, the directorate works hard to protect them. At the same time, uh, we are an organization that enforces the law by implementing the stated penalties. Uh, we are fully committed to providing the comprehensive services and healthcare uh, communication methods between the inmates and their families, as well as the visitation rights. Recently, uh, a limited number of inmates blocked corridors of the cells and refused to enter the rooms and violated instructions provided services by the directorate for hinders such as calls, uh, health, living services for other inmates. Uh, they were involved in acts of violence against police person uh, who were trying to provide the services for them. The inmates were warned and repeatedly asked to follow the law and they refused to adhere. Therefore, required security and legal procedures were taken against the violated, violated inmates by only taking them inside the rooms so they can open the corridors and facilitate the movement uh, inside the building and resume. And resume. The public uh, prosecution, uh, ombudsman, and the National Institute of Human Rights were notified about the incident. And uh, could you also brief us about the provided services to inmates? Uh, the Reformation and Rehabilitation Center provides uh, many services uh, such as health, uh, living, uh, sports, fun, religious, uh, educational services. Uh, but after the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the center's management has taken all precautionary measures and provided free vaccines for all inmates 100% of the inmates who registered for the vaccine were vaccinated. At the beginning of this month, the visit service for the families of inmates were reintroduced for the inmates and families who took the vaccines. And that was the first attempt, Abdurrahman Naif from the Reformation and Rehabilitation Center at the Ministry of Interior. Thank you very much for joining us. Gulf Air announced the signing of a co-chairing agreement with Saudi Airlines with the aim of increasing travel options offered to travelers by the two companies and consolidating the strategic partnership between them. Gulf Air said in a statement that the two companies will expand their operations regionally and globally by sharing the code, providing distinctive Arab hospitality to their guests as well as giving them more options from local stations in Saudi Arabia and international ones through the network of stations of the two companies. The statement added that the common symbol agreement between Gulf Air and Saudi Airlines is a cornerstone of trade cooperation efforts between the two sides and also embodies the deep historical relations between the two countries. 
The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 667,979 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 525,060 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 10,359 with 1,402 recoveries, 1,206 registered new cases, 482 of the New Year's registered cases or expatriates, 686 are contacts of active cases and 38 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.